It's 1943, and the North Atlantic is shrouded in thick mist. The ocean is uneasy and flooded with sea wolves, German submarines on the hunt for any Allied convoy. Nonetheless, the imposing USS Iowa, the largest and most powerful battleship in the US Navy, armed with its massive 16-inch guns, ventures forward, fearless as the fog thickens. The crew knows a far bigger threat lies ahead on the horizon. Battleship Bismarck, the pride of the Kriegsmarine. She has almost the same tonnage, speed, guns, and armor as her American counterpart. They steadily move closer to each other under the thick fog. Suddenly, Iowa's sonar detects an ominous rumbling, a massive vessel piercing through the ocean's stillness. It's Bismarck. The officers immediately issue hurried commands. To battle stations, they shout. An instant later, Bismarck spotters detect the silhouette of Iowa emerging from the darkness. Iowa fixes her 16-inch guns. Bismarck does the same with her 8 15-inch main battery, and each awaits their captain's command. The battle of the Atlantic's largest battleships is about to begin. The battleship Bismarck, the pride of the Kriegsmarine, was the largest European battleship at the time of her construction during the early phase of World War II. Besides the Imperial Japanese Navy's Yamato and Musashi battleships, Bismarck was the third most powerful battleship the world had ever seen. Bismarck, along with her sister battleship, Tirpitz, was built following the 1922 Washington Naval Treaty restrictions imposed on Germany. Both ships had a 35,000 ton limit, but eventually reached a standard displacement of over 42,000 tons. This tonnage was similar to that of post-war British battleships, such as HMS Hood, built in 1920, which also displaced 42,000 tons and would later face Bismarck during the Battle of the Denmark Strait. Other Treaty-era warships included the British King George V-class battleships, with a standard displacement of 36,727 tons, and the U.S. Navy's North Carolina and South Dakota-class battleships, with a standard displacement of 35,000 tons. At the time, France built two battleships of the Richelieu-class, with a standard displacement of 37,832 tons, and Benito Mussolini's Regia Marina developed three battleships of the Vittorio Veneto class, with an overall displacement of 40,516 tons. The Imperial Japanese Navy left the treaty and developed Yamato and Musashi with an impressive displacement of over 71,000 long tons. For the European theater, the only Allied ships that would surpass the Bismarck class were the non-treaty American Iowa-class battleships. These were built in 1943, once the war had broken out rendering the naval treaty useless. Battleship Bismarck, commissioned in August 1940, was the pride of the Kriegsmarine. It symbolized German naval power and defiance against the hegemony of the British Royal Navy. The ship was the pinnacle of naval engineering and design, boasting several innovative features that set it apart from other ships of her time. She had a length of 792 feet, a beam of 118 feet, a draft of 30 feet, and weighed an astonishing 50,300 tons under full load. Among her many innovative features was the introduction of horizontal armor protection, which comprised sloping armor that improved the hull's resistance to shell impacts. This added protection was also dubbed turtleback armor. In addition, the battleship also incorporated anti-torpedo bulges along her sides to increase resistance against torpedo damage. Bismarck also boasted sophisticated fire control systems, including radar, rangefinders, and gyroscopic stabilizers, greatly enhancing her accuracy in targeting enemy vessels. All in all, Bismarck's armor was more than impressive. Its main belt armor was over 12.6 inches thick, the turrets were 14.2 inches, and the deck armor was between 3.9 and 4.7 inches. The battleship's armored citadel protected critical areas, enhancing its survivability. Although she packed enough firepower to take on any battleship of her time, Bismarck's primary role was to scour the seas as a commerce raider to support the U-boat crews in choking Britain by blocking foreign supplies. With this objective in mind, Bismarck was tailored for long operations with an approximate range of over 8,870 nautical miles, allowing her to undertake extended missions and raids deep into the Atlantic Ocean. Bismarck was powered by three Bloemen Boss geared steam turbines and 12 Wagner ultra-high-pressure oil-fired boilers, allowing her to reach an impressive top speed of around 30 knots. Her engine and propulsion system were advanced for the time, making Bismarck faster than any ship of her time. To establish her dominion of the seas, Bismarck was armed with eight 15-inch guns housed in four twin turrets, capable of firing high-explosive and armor-piercing shells with devastating accuracy. 
for secondary armament included over 40 naval, anti-aircraft torpedo launchers. She also carried four Arado AR-196 float planes and one double-ended catapult for reconnaissance and rescue operations. Nevertheless, despite her impressive design and capabilities, Bismarck's combat career was short-lived. In May 1941, during her first and only mission, she engaged British naval forces in the Battle of the Denmark Strait, sinking Britain's valuable battlecruiser HMS Hood, and prompting the Royal Navy to dispatch a task force of more than 25 vessels to hunt her. The sinking of Bismarck marked a significant turning point in World War II's naval theater, for it demonstrated the vulnerability of even the mightiest warships to determined adversaries and naval aircraft. Nevertheless, Bismarck remained an iconic symbol of naval engineering and prowess during a tumultuous era of maritime conflict and rapid naval technology. While Bismarck was built following the limits imposed by the Washington Naval Treaty, the United States Navy Iowa class of battleships began with a different story. After Japan refused to ratify the Naval Treaty of 1935 to develop its colossal battleships, the U.S. Navy set out to develop a new battleship design with a total displacement of over 45,000 tons. American engineers sought to use the extra tonnage to add power, protection, and firepower to the vessel. The result was a battleship with mixed firepower and speed to keep pace with a carrier force. Four vessels were built and delivered in the early 1940s. The Iowa had a length of 887 feet, a beam of 108 feet, a draft of 41 feet, and a displacement of 60,000 long tons under full load. Her main armor belt was over 12.1 inches thick to protect her against enemy shells. Anticipating attacks from dive bombers and other aerial threats, the deck armor ranged from 1.5 to 3.5 inches thick. Like Bismarck, the four Iowa battleships also featured a Citadel armor arrangement to protect critical areas and enhance the ship's survivability. Iowa was powered by eight oil-fired Babcock and Wilcox boilers and four geared steam turbines, delivering an impressive 212,000 horsepower, allowing the battleship to reach a top speed of around 33 knots. The ship's primary armament consisted of nine 16-inch Mark VII guns housed in three turrets, capable of firing armor-piercing and high-explosive shells over long distances. The secondary armament consisted of 20 5-inch anti-aircraft and anti-surface defense guns, and more than a dozen 20 and 40 millimeter guns. The design featured a teardrop-shaped hull and bulbous bow to improve hydrodynamics and stability at high speeds. Although World War II was a colossal conflict, there were few engagements between the United States Navy and Kriegsmarine surface fleets. Most of the fighting between them occurred in the Atlantic, where the U-boat wolf packs hunted down American convoys. By the time the U.S. joined the war in December 1941, Bismarck and most of the German surface fleet had already been neutralized by the Royal Navy, leaving only the U-boats as a considerable threat. Still, one could think what could have happened if the Royal Navy had failed to hunt down Germany's most powerful warships when the United States joined the war. What would have happened if the Iowa-class battleships ventured into the Atlantic while Bismarck and her sister ship Tirpitz ravaged any Allied convoy they encountered? Which ship would win a one-on-one -on -one fight at sea? For instance, the USS Iowa had a significant advantage over the Bismarck regarding firepower. USS Iowa was armed with nine 16-inch guns housed in three turrets. These guns had a range of over 20 miles and could strike surface and shore targets with lethal firepower. On the other side, Bismarck was armed with eight 15-inch guns with a similar range of 20 miles. Despite the range parity, Iowa's larger guns would inflict significantly more damage against Bismarck once both ships were within firing range. Additionally, Iowa's larger number of secondary guns gave her better anti-aircraft capabilities. Bismarck's main belt armor was 14.2 inches thick and had a 4.7-inch armored deck. On the other hand, Iowa had a main belt armor of 12.1 inches thick and a 1.5 to 3.5 inch armored deck. Both ships offered excellent protection, but when analyzing the deck, Bismarck was considerably thicker and more resistant to enemy fire, despite Iowa having more protected turrets. Both battleships had similar speeds, with Bismarck reaching a top speed of about 30 knots and Iowa a speed of around 32. On paper, both battleships were almost equal, with Bismarck having better armor and Iowa a more powerful arsenal. Nonetheless, Iowa had one unique asset the colossal Bismarck lacked, radar. The American ships were fitted with primitive radar, resulting in radar-directed guns that greatly improved their accuracy when firing at longer ranges. Eliminating Bismarck's float planes, 
Iowa could force her to rely on the visual range for her fire control systems to work out effectively. The radar-directed guns would come in handy in a scenario with low visibility, leaving Bismarck at the mercy of her surroundings to identify the American ship. The battle would be even only if both ships engaged each other in the daytime. Still, the German ship had to hit first, to prevent Iowa from landing a powerful 16-inch shell on her hull and inflicting more damage. At the end of the day, both ships could outmaneuver each other, but the range and damage of Iowa's main battery, complemented by her radar, would be more than enough to put Bismarck out of commission, if the crew failed to maneuver effectively and coordinate her shots. If the contrary occurred, and more Bismarck battleships were delivered, the British Isles would have fallen to the Third Reich, changing the war plans of the Allies. With the British home fleet decimated, the Kriegsmarine would establish its dominion over the Atlantic, convincing Hitler to continue developing Plan Z, expanding the German Navy, and the launch of Graf Zeppelin, the Reich's first aircraft carrier. Consequently, the US would take a less aggressive stance against Germany after Britain's defeat. If the American nation still went to war against Japan if it attacked Pearl Harbor, the conquest of the Atlantic would begin with Marines landing on Iceland and the Aleutians in the Pacific to defend the Western Hemisphere from the Axis forces. So much could have changed if Europe's most powerful battleship survived its first encounter against the Royal Navy and the U.S. forces.